Good afternoon. Uh, let me give you a couple of, couple of quick announcements before we, uh, before we start. The President will uh, make some remarks at approximately 3.05 this afternoon uh, about the recently uh, concluded meeting uh, with the P5 plus one uh, dealing with Iran. Uh, that'll be, again, 3.05 this afternoon. And then I wanted to just go through before Mayor we get to uh, uh, pool in the different. Uh, just a couple of let's go through quickly just the uh, uh, schedule for the president and the first lady for tomorrow. Uh, as you all know, the president will depart at approximately 640 from the White House, uh, travel overnight and arrive in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark in the morning. Uh, as you all know, the uh, arrival is open press. The president and the first lady will then deliver remarks at the Chicago 2016 presentation to members of the International Olympic Committee. Uh, the President, along with uh, other Chicago 2016 panel members, uh, then will participate in a Q&A session with IOC members. Uh, both of those are open to IOC credentialed media. Uh, there, will be a tr there will also be travel pool coverage. Uh, later, the President and the First Lady will attend an informal reception with IOC members, uh, again, with travel pool coverage. Uh, the President and the First Lady then go meet with the Queen and Prince uh, and meet with uh, Danish Prime Minister Rasmussen uh, and a pool spray at the top of that. Uh, return uh, tomorrow afternoon at approximately uh, 3.30 if we're on schedule. So that is uh, a quick scheduling update for both uh, Champagne to the eventuality. Yes. Bud Light. Thank you, Robert. Um, <laughs> when is the decision announced? Old style. Uh, it's my understanding that the decision is announced uh, at approximately 6:30 local time, uh, which I think is about roughly 12:30 uh, p.m. Uh, local time. Yeah. Can you watch that on the plane? Uh, I, there are TV capabilities on the plane. I don't know if it, where we'll, we will be traveling, we will have that or not. I, I, I don't know. We, uh, we do have, uh, we do have uh, too many phones on that plane. Yes. Thanks. This morning there was a spirited debate in the Senate Finance Committee about whether the proposed uh, fee on people who would refuse to buy um, health insurance under the proposed plan, whether that would uh, break the President's pledge not to tax individuals who make less than 200000 or families that make 250000 Do they have a good point there? No. Uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, this is, a, again, one more game that we've seen uh, in the roadblock to getting comprehensive health care reform. Uh, there's an individual mandate uh, in this piece of legislation uh, that the President supports, but uh, something that's charged an individual that doesn't have uh, and can't afford health insurance uh, is a little bit like uh, if you're not complying with the law and you're speeding. And I don't think anybody would say that if you're going too fast on the interstate that somehow somebody's uh, raised your taxes. So uh, I think that's a silly argument that we uh, can and <coughs> easily dispense with. Call the tax in the House bill and the Finance Committee bill. It's referred to as an excise tax. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I, I would it, maybe the analogy on speeding isn't. Uh, uh, I, I think is pretty clear. <coughs> yes, sir. The uh, P five plus one appears to have given Iran more breathing space, um, several more weeks at least before uh, they are to, as the president has demanded, come clean on their nuclear program. He had actually said in advance that that response was expected at this meeting, had to come at this meeting. What's, uh, what makes sorry, the administration... What, what had to come at this meeting? That, the, the, that Iran had to, give, had to, had to respond well, at this let's, meeting. Well, let's understand what the Iranians have initially agreed to, uh, and that is full compliance uh, and transparency around the facility at Qom, which, as you know, uh, was uh, publicly disclosed less than a week ago, uh, a facility that had been long under construction. In, uh, long in violation of IAE rules. Uh, no one ever suspected or believed that this issue was going to be uh, finished with or dealt with after 
uh, one meeting. Uh, I do believe that today's meeting was a constructive beginning uh, to this process, understanding that the onus remains on the Iranians, as it did prior to the meeting, to live up to what they promised today and to live up to their continued international obligations to provide confidence uh, to the international community that what they're uh, undertaking is for peaceful means, uh, not for a weapons program. Again, we believe it was a constructive start. Uh, the onus continues to be on the Iranians to live up to their obligations. But the Iranians have given no indication at this meeting, as far as we've seen so far, that they're going to back down on their defiance of international demands that they well, suspend Iranian that, enrichment. Uh, what two days ago, I was responding to your story that they wouldn't talk about their nuclear program, and we seem to, uh, we seem to have spent some quality time talking about their nuclear program today. Uh, I think the president has been clear, and you'll hear the president say today, uh, as he has. Uh, for more than two years. This is not talk for talk's sake. Uh, if at any point this appears to simply be the Iranians trying to talk some issue to death, uh, then I think working in concert with and common purpose with our P5 plus one partners uh, will take additional steps to ensure uh, that Iran knows we mean business. And, uh, the Iranians have said that they have become, that they have actually um, disclosed all their nuclear facilities at this stage. That's, the Iranians say they have now disclosed all of their nuclear facilities. Does the administration believe that? Uh, I, uh, I think uh, I'll let the IEA deal with, uh, with that, not get into uh, uh, any of those matters, and expect that Iran again will live up to what they promised to do at the table here today. How is the president going to address the, the ongoing violence in Chicago going to the, before the Olympic Committee and making that bid? I'm sorry? How is the president going to address the ongoing violence in Chicago in going before the Olympic Committee and making the bid? Is it something that he's going to address? Is he well, prepared to talk about, about it? Well, I talked about this yesterday. Uh, obviously, it's of great concern to uh, the president as somebody who's lives in Chicago, but would, would and should be a concern for uh, every American. This isn't a Chicago problem. This is uh, violence, uh, youth violence uh, is a problem throughout our country. Uh, the President is concerned and uh, has asked that next Wednesday uh, Education Secretary Arne Duncan uh, and Attorney General Eric Holder travel to Chicago. Uh, they'll meet with um, officials from the school, uh, meet with uh, students, uh, and meet with the community uh, to talk about the issues of uh, school violence and youth violence. It's not a Chicago problem, obviously, but he's going before the Olympic Committee tomorrow. Is he prepared? What is he prepared to say if it comes up as, you know, they ask about the safety of the city in which the well, Olympics would be I held? Think the, president, uh, uh, the president has full confidence in the safety of the city and uh, is, will be prepared to talk about that if that were a question. Why does the White House think? Um, what, are the, what does the White House think is, is the key as to why the predator strikes in Pakistan have been so much more successful? Not going to get into, uh, not going to get into uh, discussing that. Uh, Based on press accounts of <coughs> predator strikes, I, I appreciate the opportunity, but uh, not going there. Um, does the president or the White House have any response to comments made yesterday by Congressman uh, Grayson about how the Republican, or maybe it was earlier <laughs> this week, about the Republicans' solution to health care is they want everybody to die? Well, I mean, I would simply reiterate what we've said uh, on this a number of times, and uh, I think this goes for anybody uh, from whatever political party and whatever end of the political spectrum that we ought to be able to have uh, an honest calm debate uh, about health care, the need for health care reform, uh, without uh, disparaging each other. Is the White House, and this is my last question, I'm sorry, is the White House involved? Uh, obviously, you guys are monitoring the votes in the Senate Finance Committee, but are you making the President's position on different amendments clear to those senators that are voting? We're, we're, we are, uh, we're watching the process and, uh, uh, are you saying the President believes that uh, I can uh, check the legislative affairs. I, I don't know that that's the case. I, I don't. I don't believe we're uh, uh, we're that involved in the committee process. Yes, ma'am. Has the president given up on the uh, public option? Uh, 
<laughs> no, Helen, this is. Uh, I don't care. Uh, sure, I ask it day after day because that has great meaning in this country. You never answer it. Well, I, I, I apparently don't answer it to your satisfaction. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the same answer that I gave you unsatisfactorily for many of those other days. Uh, uh, it's what the president believes in. Uh, well, because he's going to it, fight for it or not. Uh, we're going to work to get uh, choice and competition uh, into health care reform. You're not going to get it. Well, well, then why do you keep asking me? <laughs> because, because I want your conscience to bother you. I am. Uh, <laughs> I, wow. <laughs> Should we sit down and I confess a little bit to you? And uh, no, I'm. Uh, go ahead. I'm. <laughs> Uh, on wow. sanctions, on, yeah. on Iran sanctions, you said a little while. Are you going to make me feel bad too? I am. Okay. I'm, I'm trying. I want this to weigh on your conscience right. also. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you said earlier that if at any point it looks like Iran is talking oh. this to death, uh, we will take additional step, steps to show we mean business. Yeah. Two questions. Number one, do you have a time? Uh, some people have talked about the end of the year as the. the well, the president's the, talked about that in the Oval Office. But some administration officials yesterday said maybe it's not the end of the year. Maybe it's much sooner than that if it becomes clear. Well, I think by the end of the year, as the president said, uh, this is a situation that uh, will be dealt with. It will either be dealt with with the Iranians choosing to take a path towards uh, responsibility uh, or it will be dealt with collectively with the international community. Um, and on the issue of taking <coughs> steps to show we mean business, there are some experts on sanctions in Iranian side who believe the only thing you could really do that would have an immediate effect on Iran is the gasoline issue, is uh, working with other nations, either unilaterally through the buy legislation or uh, through the United Nations, cutting off gasoline exports from other countries to Iran. Is that on the table well, for the administration? Uh, How do you feel about the buy legislation? Well, I, I would say that... Uh, as the president said last week, uh, when uh, he and other leaders uh, discussed uh, the facility at Cone, that uh, uh, that if they didn't address this, if they didn't uh, live up to their responsibilities, then we'd take action. Uh, I, I think uh, I wouldn't pull anything off the table. Uh, we want to work and have worked collectively with our P5 plus one partners to get to this point. Uh, I think we've made progress and uh, uh, we'll continue to make plans for uh, what might happen if the Iranians don't live up to their obligations. And could you clarify where exactly does it stand after today's meeting for uh, the next meeting? Uh, I, uh, watching uh, Javier Solana's uh, uh, comments, uh, I believe there will be a meeting uh, before the end of October, uh, but I don't, uh, from what I saw, that date has not yet been announced. Satisfactory to the United States. Well, uh, we are. Uh, the, we we do know from from his comments that uh, the agenda is on the nuclear program, and I think, again, that's progress from uh, what we had heard weeks ago and even a week ago, that the Iranians were not going to discuss their nuclear program. Uh, but again, Chip, this is um, we've worked this methodically. Uh, we're not uh, we're not going to talk this issue to death. Uh, the Iranians are going to have to take responsibility, demonstrate their actions, uh, mean something. Uh, and if, uh, if, if we or others in the P5 plus one don't get the feeling that they are, then we'll take steps. And inspectors need to be allowed into this facility by when? Uh, I believe in the next couple of weeks, uh, as, uh, as Mr. Solana said. Deadline as far as the United States well, is concerned. Uh, I mean, or will Iran just keep extending and stringing, well, the, stringing you along? Then it would not be living up to those obligations, and then we'd move to the next phase. Uh, again, this is uh, this is not an issue that's going to be talked to death. This is not an issue that is going to go years and years and years, or even months and months and months. Yes, sir. Just to quickly follow up, but a month is not a short amount of time in this case. If the next meeting is not till the end of the end of October, well, by the end of. Expectation is these inspections happen well, in the next couple of weeks, uh, then the meeting, yeah. correct? I don't know. I, I admit I don't know the, I, I have not seen from the IAEA the exact timing of the next meeting. A couple other items. Senator Harkin, chairman of the Senate Health Committee, today said uh, no Republicans would be at the table in the Senate when his bill and the Senate Finance Committee bill is merged. 
Uh, is that what the White House thinks ought, ought, to be, I, I, ought to be the case? I'm not going to get ahead of the bill getting out of the Finance Committee, and I haven't seen those comments. Second thing, uh, today the House added a provision, a motion in one of these ways that the House can do these things, uh, inside the Homeland Security Appropriations Bill that would prevent anybody who's been detained in Gitmo to be transferred to a U.S. prison. And it, this motion passed the House, obviously, you'd have to see it, and it, it would be a part of that appropriation. Are, are you guys, are you guys going to actively work to make sure this gets taken out? Uh, let me talk with Legislative Affairs. Uh, I have not seen that provision, but uh, I will tell I you that. supportive of this provision. Well, the, pre the President is going to do what it takes to close uh, Guantanamo Bay. That's what he promised, and that's what he intends to do because it'll improve our security. And quickly on this text messaging, are you? Uh, how are you? This means you cannot use your BlackBerry in your car. That's what correct? I'm told. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm told. Are you gonna be able to do this? I. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, well, I, I assume I'd somebody would take my picture and show it to the president, which wouldn't Wait, be your good. conscience. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, not to mention the additional conscience burden one bears I thought you had each and one. every day at work. Well, so you can use a <laughs> private BlackBerry? I'm going to use my doctor to find that. So you can use a private BlackBerry no, and text I, while driving, or you can use a, but you I, can't I, use you know, your I, government? I, I think it would be a good example uh, for me not to use any BlackBerry. You can change your uh, to, yeah, I, I'm going to have to. I, uh, Look, I don't think there's any, no, <laughs> no that, would, that wouldn't be, uh, that would weigh on my conscience. Um, no, look, I, I think it's a, we, we've all read, um, you know, accounts of, of horrific accidents, uh, of what happens. Uh, I think all of us understand, we've all done this, and we all understand that, you know, had we not looked up at a certain point, we might have hit somebody in front of us, and uh, it's a serious problem, and... Uh, uh, this is the beginning of addressing that, and we'll all have to rightly change our behavior. So I'll, I'll call you when I get home. <laughs> um, on a different subject, the, the right went after Van Jones uh, for statements that he had made in the past. He lost his job. Yo, this guy, Yossi Sargent at the National Endowment of the Arts, uh, was their next target. He lost his job. Um, now the uh, now conservatives are going after Kevin Jennings at the Department of Education for what they say is I don't know facilitating I can't remember what it was but anyway something bad um, and <laughs> it was it was, no, it was it was facilitating statutory rape um, and I'm wondering first of all of you guys are you aware of this latest campaign do you have anything substantive to say about what they are saying about this guy Kevin Jennings. And, um, you know, when does, wh what do you think of this hopscotching from a, appointment, uh, Obama appointment to Obama appointment like this? Well, I, 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 I think the Department of Education had a statement on this. I would point you to that. Um, I think there are um, many good people from every political persuasion that seek to serve their country and serve in government. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, it's a sacrifice, uh, but one that uh, people do voluntarily because they love their country. Uh, I think it's a shame uh, to watch uh, what they do. I think it's a shame. Uh, I, I hope that as people watch, they'll uh, match up some of the, the actual truth to what uh, is being said on uh, on some of these occasions and uh, uh, and start to provide a little uh, reality check to uh, some of what's going on. Now, now some in your camp would say that it's the White House that has the power to stop it simply by no longer taking pushing these guys out of their positions. Um, is there is there a role, is is there any truth to that? I, I think in, in the previous occasions that you mentioned are people that resigned on their own volition. Robert, can you explain why you won't mention in any way uh, anything about the use of predators in Afghanistan and Pakistan? Uh, I am uh, uh, not going to get into discussing uh, uh, military operations. Well, you discuss military operations, but you, you, you just always um, you know, refuse to uh, address anything about the use of predators. 
Yes. Can you tell us uh, <laughs> if any progress? Was, well, that's what I asked. But yeah. Uh, yeah. at peril of his conscience. He <laughs> well, uh, I, I am. Uh, there, there are, I think, a series of things that uh, many in my position uh, over the years have chosen uh, for uh, important national security reasons not to discuss, and uh, I'll continue uh, that tradition. Was um, much progress made in the uh, sit room meeting yesterday afternoon? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I think there, I think a lot was, a lot of progress was made. I understand, just to give you a little background, I think we, a lot of us talked to folks on this. It was, uh, it lasted the full three hours. Um, there was, uh, I think, a, a very constructive conversation uh, and assessment about where we, where we were, uh, understanding that the president in March made decisions to send additional forces to the region to secure uh, Afghanistan ahead of its election and then to evaluate at the conclusion of that uh, where we stood. Uh, so in, in we started off in many ways uh, exactly where we thought we'd be. Um, we had an opportunity to uh, get a fairly in-depth intelligence assessment uh, on uh, what's going on in Afghanistan and Pakistan and to assess individually uh, where we are in each and uh, what's changed since March. And I think you've seen uh, cases where uh, things have gone and advanced uh, more quickly than one might have thought originally. Uh, I would put in that category, obviously, um, the cooperation that uh, the international community has gotten from Pakistan uh, in dealing directly with uh, threats uh, within their borders. Uh, obviously, there remain a series of challenges, not the least of which is, um, as General McChrystal talked about, a security situation that has deteriorated more rapidly than many supposed. Um, in, in Afghanistan, as well as uh, uh, continued uncertainty around election results. Will it take another three sessions uh, for a strategy to be drafted? Uh, I think it, uh, I, I think it, it probably at a, uh, likely at a minimum. Uh, this was the second long meeting that the president has held uh, to discuss this. Um, uh, there are two more, as you know, scheduled for next week on Wednesday and Friday. Uh, the agendas with which are being drawn up uh, by uh, principals that were in the meeting along with the president. And look, the president got a chance yesterday to hear from uh, a robust discussion with the intelligence community and a robust discussion with military and diplomatic advisors uh, that participated from the region. Um, President heard from, uh, by my count, uh, 17 different people as part of that meeting. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was exceedingly productive. I think the president, I think most of the participants thought that as well. So, on the timing, did Jones leave early to brief the senators? I wasn't. He did. He. Uh, uh, did, we had a, a commitment to brief them on both the process in Afghanistan as well as uh, 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 developments with Iran. Uh, I believe, I could check my notes, I think he left sometime in the third hour uh, of, of the meeting. Uh, I mean, a, a separate question on the floor. But again, I, I would say, Jones, uh, I don't know how long, there, there was a principal committee meeting the day before, uh, before the meeting with the president that, uh, that Jones shared throughout. So uh, he's, uh, th there wasn't anything discussed in the meeting that he hasn't been working through. And then a FOIA Fed questionnaire is this FOIA request to compel the Fed um, to release the banks uh, that received some it's, some funding yesterday. Alana Kagan supported the Fed's decision not to to go ahead with an appeal on that. How does this square with transparency? I mean, Kagan's like allowing the Fed not to release these names. You guys talk about transparency well, all the time. Uh, we, we we don't just talk about transparency. Uh, we've we're, we're the first administration in the history of the country, Hans, to let you know, uh, beginning soon on a regular basis, who comes into the White House, who they come to meet with, and how long they're here. Uh, the Fed is an independent agency, uh, and I'm not going to get into discussing uh, an ongoing uh, case well, that's an agency that Kagan, as part of your administration, is supporting their actions. And, and, uh, and in her responsibility as a, a, 
as Solicitor General and as part of the Department of Justice, but I'm not going to get into discussing a, an active legal case. I'll grab a couple of, on Afghanistan and Iran, but I just want to follow up on Chuck's question about, in general, doesn't the White House <laughs> believe it's proper and in most cases, or if not all cases, necessary for the opposition party, in this case Republicans, to be involved in a conference committee debate on a significant piece of legislation? Uh, the, the, the melding well, of two large committee bills, well, as was contemplated, the, or is the, contemplated by the, Chairman Hart. The White House uh, and the Finance Committee have been actively working with Republicans for months. Uh, 200 and some amendments, or almost 200 amendments, were approved by Republicans on the HELP bill. Uh, you know, again, I, I, the same answer I gave yesterday. We're we're happy to work with Republicans that are happy to work with us. But understand, Major, we've, uh, you know, I, I got asked yesterday about House leadership and why they haven't had a chance to talk to the president when three months ago they declared what they were what the president was doing uh, something they couldn't support. It's unclear to me what it is they do in a meeting. <laughs> Reiterate the fact that they three months ago said they didn't support what the president was doing. The president reads that in the newspaper. Uh, I think the president has worked every step of the way constructively with Republicans that also want to work constructively with him. I don't think that definition is fit each and every uh, member up there on Capitol Hill. Okay. On Afghanistan, yesterday in here we talked a little bit about the political context of timing of how long the president was going to decide, but I want to ask you mm -hmm. about something that may have actually come up in yesterday's meeting that's more strategic. Does the president believe, and did his military advisors say he has some breathing space now on the idea of whether or not to send additional combat forces because as Secretary Gates said, even if you were to decide tonight, they couldn't arrive to theater until January, and that typically is a much less active military time in Afghanistan. So I'm just curious if you I think the scenario that. that you outline is absolutely factual. I will I'll tell you, as I've told others, uh, there was not a discussion last night about additional troops. In any way, shape, or form? Not in the three hours. But no. would it be fair to say that yeah. within those who are advising the president, this, there, there is this idea of a window of opportunity where a decision, whatever, there's some well, room for that yeah. to be made? Well, I, again, because I think this tactical right, reality. I think the scenario that you outline is, is certainly factual. I think uh, there have been concerns brought up about uh, the availability of troops in the near term as well. Uh, I think all of those are certainly factors that will have to go into a decision-making process at a point in which we get uh, to that discussion. Uh, we just we, we weren't at that point last evening. Yeah. On Iran, um, there was, not, in addition to the plenary session, there was a bilateral conversation between Mr. Burns and Mr. Jalili. Yeah. This constitutes the highest level engagement of the two countries diplomatically since 1979. Do you want to comment about the the weight the American people should give to that, what it signals, <coughs> is, is that in itself, according to the White House, a positive development about well, where this might be heading? Uh, understand that uh, uh, Mr. Burns outlined uh, again for the Iranians uh, the case that the P5 plus one outlined to the broader group uh, earlier uh, in the day uh, and reiterated to them uh, that uh, the responsibilities that they had. Uh, there was, uh, Mr. Burns brought up the issue of human rights. Uh, uh, and uh, I think, again, this, uh, this can be productive if and only if the Iranians decide to live up to those responsibilities. At a point in which uh, they make the decision not to, uh, then I think not only will America know, but the world will know that they're not interested in uh, dealing with this on the level. Also, at his press conference, Mr. Jalili said there are a number of other issues the Iranians believe are central to these talks. He listed drug trafficking, human trafficking, the international financial meltdown, regional security issues. All of those are, I would assume from the U.S. perspective, side issues or minimal issues next to the future of the Iran nuclear program. I think How would you rate them, and do you consider that an attempt to drag or slow these conversations down? I think the point of these conversations is clearly about Iran's nuclear program. Uh, that's what uh, the, the, the team from the P5 plus one spent uh, that time talking to the Iranians about, and uh, uh, that's what we expect concrete action to follow on promises that they made. Raising these issues, is that uh, a distraction or a diversion or something well, to undermine these talks? Again, I, I think uh, 
uh, I think the Iranians know the responsibilities that they have to live up to. Uh, and now uh, we expect them to take the steps uh, that they agreed to with the IEA today. Thanks. You're good. Jeffrey? I was wondering if uh, the President uh, feels that uh, at some point before <coughs> making um, his next uh, big decision on Afghanistan, if he needs to visit um, the uh, country himself, um, since he is not yet as President. Uh, I, I don't know if, uh, if anything, I, I think this got mentioned earlier in the week, and uh, I, I hesitate to, uh, I hesitate then to talk about it. Uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if anything is on the schedule. I think obviously the, the President uh, uh, believes that we're getting uh, a lot of good information uh, from uh, all sides of this, and uh, we're going to take the time to make uh, a methodical decision. On a separate question about the Olympics, what is he doing on this long flight to uh, prepare for <coughs> what he needs to do during his short time there? Sit what type of briefings? <laughs> right, right. What type of, of briefings has he been given, and um, who is who is briefing him, and what does he need to accomplish? Well, look, I think obviously he's going to make a, a, an appeal for uh, on behalf of uh, all of America to showcase uh, America to the world in 2016. Uh, he will uh, work on remarks that he'll make as part of the IOC presentation. Uh, I'm uh, part of the American uh, IOC presentation, uh, and uh, uh, will likely continue to make calls uh, to uh, to members that are going to vote. Has he been focusing on on um, on leaders beyond the leaders from African countries, or has that been his primary focus? No, no, he's. Uh, uh, some from there and, and some from uh, other parts of the world. Would it be like a caucus? Uh, One and two and three process. <laughs> I don't know if they've got everybody lined up quite like that and uh, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Why, why can General McChrystal not come back and brief Congress? He I'm sorry? A number of members of Congress have asked General McChrystal to come brief them on Afghanistan. And I believe they were told that he needed to stay in Afghanistan, yet he was in London giving a speech this morning. Senator McCain was particularly <coughs> vehement on this today. Why can't General I, 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 I have not seen uh, I have not seen Senator McCain's comments so on this. President, if he comes back, I, I, I'd, I'd certainly like to see the comments and. Uh, Robert, uh, Senator, Senator, uh, yeah. Senator Majority uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's called for this. Congressman after congressman have called for this. Joe Lieberman's called for this. There's a whole bunch of people. This is one house. I'd be happy to look at this. I'd be happy for days. We're not asking about the comments. We're asking what about the idea of General McChrystal. I'd, I'd like to see the comments. And, and but at that point, I could comment forget, for forget the comments. Should right. General right. McChrystal be able to come back <laughs> yeah. to Congress? And should, should he testify before the president makes a decision? I guess the, is what I'm, I'm happy to look at the comments. <laughs> this is not about comments. This is about the general. Is General McChrystal going to testify? I'm, I'm happy to look at what the basis of your question is and get back to you, Margaret. Um, a couple of personnel questions. Um, the White House today is announcing that the NSC's uh, Chief of Staff, Mark Lippert, is um, going to be leaving to return to active duty yep. in the Navy. Um, does this move have any underlying differences of opinion or a broader personnel move about it, or is this entirely a personal decision by Mark? You know, I, I, Mark has been with the President uh, since uh, probably January or February of 2005 when he first joined, uh, when the President first came to the U.S. Senate. Uh, Mark's been in the reserve. Mark was activated in uh, uh, sometime in the spring of 2007. I remember, uh, I remember when Mark told me he was going uh, to Iraq, we were in a parking lot outside of a high school in, in Iowa. And uh, uh, he wanted to tell me before he told uh, Senator Obama because he wanted to see, well, I don't, he said to me, I don't want to, I don't want him to think I'm letting you guys down. Somebody who was going to serve our country in Iraq. And, is this anything operative now or is there anything else going no, on? He, he, he and I had a discussion. Mark, Mark, again, served our country as hundreds of thousands of men and women in Iraq and Afghanistan and in other places throughout this country have, uh, admirably and bravely. Uh, Mark has wanted for a long time to return to service. He and I had a discussion before the end of the campaign in a barn uh, in, on an apple farm in New Hampshire. And, uh, 
we were inside because it was raining outside. <laughs> uh, and Mark wanted, uh, Mark wanted my opinion because he said, I'd, I'm struggling if we win about going to the White House because the truth is I, I might also want to go back to the Navy. He talked to the president about that before uh, he made a decision to come here. And I think Mark uh, just wants to serve uh, right now uh, in the Navy as an intelligence officer. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. I just want to do my second personal question, uh, which is on uh, Peter Galbraith. Yesterday, uh, the administration said that um, his firing was a UN personnel matter. Uh, but my sort of follow-up question is, does the White House support the UN's decision? Uh, do the White House get a heads up? And do the White House protest or accept the decision? Uh, none of I would uh, I'd push you to the UN as a, as a UN personnel matter. Did you have a follow-up? I had a question about um, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You mentioned intelligence, uh, getting an in-depth intelligence briefing yesterday. Mm -hmm. How much of the um, of that discussion, the intelligence briefing there, and just the broader Afghanistan discussion is about trying to really get down into the details of how much the Al Qaeda, Taliban uh, threat is a transnational threat versus a regional threat. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, look, without, as you can imagine, without going into a ton of detail uh, on what was discussed inside that room, obviously uh, that was um, something that was discussed for quite some time uh, as a part of yesterday's uh, briefing with the president. April. Robert, um, two questions. One, uh, Chicago. Um, Wednesday, is this mostly say something to the community and to the nation, we're watching, we're observing, we see, or is there going to be policy, something with teeth um, for these school kids who, school kids and kids in the community? Well, I, I, I'm going to let uh, uh, Secretary Duncan and Attorney General Holder uh, go uh, and, and may or may not have something out of that, but I'm going to let them do that. Uh, obviously, April, we talked about this yesterday. I think there's obviously uh, things that uh, all levels of government can do, uh, all levels of, uh, or, and partly what we can do, obviously, through something like a COPS program is provide more police officers on the streets, understanding, though, that uh, you are not going to be able to legislate uh, an end to uh, the type of shocking and horrific behavior that we saw that happened uh, in Chicago uh, in the beating to death of that honor student. I, I, I will ask him. I don't know if he's seen uh, the particular tape. I know uh, he mentioned to us uh, in the Oval Office that uh, uh, how much of a concern uh, the incident was to him. Actually, a third, but yeah. <laughs> it was weighing on my conscience. Go ahead. Well, I'm glad to know you have conscience at some point. Anyway, Ooh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. See, go ahead. See. Apparently, I hadn't weighed enough that I'm still giving you a third question, but go ahead. Okay, anyway, going back to um, Chip's question, that, and I asked yesterday about gasoline. Could you tell me the significance of the role of gasoline in these discussions yeah. and in this pressuring? No, no I understand. Um, uh, and and all, all I did with, with answering Chip's question, and I think answering your question yesterday, was uh, obviously uh, the, the administration and, and with the P5 plus one are looking at the possible next steps, but I'm not going to get into uh, the pluses and minuses of, of of individual aspects of what might be involved uh, in potential international sanctions. David, David, um, in response to the Galbraith firing, the the chief of rival to President Karzai said that fraud is victorious in Afghanistan now, mm -hmm. and the McChrystal report goes on at great length about corruption in the Afghan government. Right. What can the Obama administration do as it weighs uh, options in Afghanistan about corruption in Afghanistan? And if you don't deal with that, uh, do you have a way of handling Afghanistan with a corrupt government in place? Well, we talked a little bit about this uh, in the last day or so. In dealing specifically with the vote, obviously there are two. There's an internal Afghan and there's an international uh, committee uh, looking into uh, allegations and evidence of fraud. And our position continues to be uh, that uh, legitimate votes uh, should all be counted, and those that aren't legitimate should be thrown out. Uh, I think we're probably still uh, several days away from uh, a, uh, a decision by each of those committees 
uh, and and we we certainly await that decision. Um, look, I, I think without getting into a, a lot of specifics, I'll reiterate what I said well, yesterday. Uh, I, I understand uh, that regardless of what decision ultimately comes from the administration uh, in concert with all of the players and actors that were in the Situation Room yesterday, I don't think you could find anybody with any international expertise that didn't strongly believe that uh, you had to have uh, a willing partner to make anything succeed in Afghanistan. Uh, we, as I've said, are not going to be there forever, uh, which means uh, the security of the Afghan people uh, through either a security force or a police force is going to have to be the obligation and responsibility of the Afghan government. Uh, they've got to demonstrate to the world uh, their ability to um, receive international aid and put it to use uh, not for cronyism but for uh, worthwhile development projects that through economic development will increase and sustain the security of the Afghan people. That without a willing uh, partner, uh, one that is uh, free of corruption and transparent, uh, I don't think any situation or any series of meetings uh, can adequately solve uh, for the Afghan people the problem that uh, that, that would contribute to. Thanks, guys.